Hey everybody. Yo. What's up? <laughs> Thanks for uh, coming to hang out with us. We decided, um, the kids actually, we, we did some live streaming, we played some music last, mm. a couple weekends ago. And the kids thought, uh, hey dad, we should do, they're all YouTubing and uploading YouTube videos and doing stuff. And so we thought, mom's out of town tonight and we decided to make steak and beans, which is kind of a staple around here. And we decided to, share it with the world. So this is our, uh, this is some Costco prime ribeye and some I call them granny bee beans, but I've been making these beans since, I don't know, probably 25 years, 30 years or something like that. Um, and then just some garlic bread. And uh, so we appreciate you guys joining us. Uh, bon appetit. All right, so so while uh, while Gavin is cutting up uh, the onions, the basic ingredients for this is pretty pretty simple. It's really about uh, the time that you cook it, like how long that you cook it. And honestly, I think it's there's a few things that are specific to it. One of them is this. This is one of these uh, Dutch ovens, the Le Creuset Dutch ovens. I've cooked these in a lot of different. Uh, pans and bowls and stuff. For whatever reason, these ceramic uh, lake resets are the ones that, uh, that do the best. And so, kind of what's going to happen here is we're going to get all the ingredients prepared, and then we'll just start putting stuff in the way that we, <laughs> the way that we, Tyler. the way that we put it in. Oh, look, he's crying. Oh, I'm crying, Dad. So the ingredients. Obviously, we're making green beans. So the ingredients here. This is uh, from Costco. Um, Maybe your local Costco will carry these these giant ones, but this is the proportions that uh, always seem to work. And so we use one giant can of these. This is probably six cans, maybe six or seven cans, like regular cans. The Del Monte is and has always been the best. I've used other ones. Um, and then of course there's bacon. Uh, this is from our local grocery store, HEB. This is a new thing. It's uh, like a uh, it's like some hatch chili or whatever in here. The one that I prefer has got has jalapeno. It's got a little bit of a kick to it. What I actually look at or look for when I'm getting bacon for the beans is I look for the ones that almost like they're mostly fat. Like I don't want super lean bacon because I'll show you in a second as we start cooking this. It's really about how much grease and stuff that you can get out. We don't actually, we, when we fry the bacon, we don't actually remove the grease. We cook everything in it. So I try to find bacon that is the, you know, if you see that, it's pretty much on the side. It's fatty, super fatty all the way through. So that's an important piece of that. Cutting, uh, you know, cutting the onions, they don't have to be super fine or anything, but you'd, you, know, you obviously want them to, you know, be bite size or be edible bite size. And then the other ingredient is some garlic. And I, we just use the easy button here with the, with the squeeze garlic. And then finally, and this is kind of the kicker piece, there's a bunch of different options, but I'll put a link to this uh, in the video of where you can buy this stuff. But I've been using this uh, from Texas Barbecue Rubs uh, Company for quite some time. This is a brown sugar based rub. It doesn't have everything in their ingredients, but you can see it's sugar and cane syrup, salt, red pepper, black pepper, and other spices. So there's a lot of different things in here, but it's a very uh, kind of sweet, a little bit of spice to it, but obviously with the brown sugar uh, is sweet. And so I use a kind of a heaping handful of this when I put it in, it makes a huge difference. So we got these things cut up and then Garrett can cut up. Again, proportion wise, this is what usually works. This is one, one pound of bacon, one pretty good size yellow onion. And that onion is right because my eyes it's been cut up my eyes are still watering over here and it is definitely easier when this is not almost room temperature but at the end of the day here we're just frying it anyway so it doesn't really doesn't really matter what it what it looks like so you want to separate these out And you can see here again, these are the best kind of pieces uh, when you're picking this bacon. You don't want to pick like a super lean or an uncured bacon because you're trying to get the maximum amount, extract the maximum amount of grease. Because the secret 
to these beans. I don't even see my watch. It's one o'clock in the afternoon. And we're not gonna eat tonight until probably 6.30 or so. The real secret here is just time. time. There's nothing fancy to this, uh, to this recipe. The longer you can cook them, almost the better they are. It's almost like you can't, can't, them. You can't really screw them up and these actually get better. I usually make way more than we can actually eat and they get better as you go along. All right, so these have been cooking for about eight minutes or so. And one of the things that's really important, like, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll brown up a little bit more once we add the onions in here, because you want to add the onions and then within the, you know, bacon grease and stuff, you want to caramelize the onions a little bit. But it's really important here, you can see with this super fatty bacon, <coughs> there is a nice layer of bacon grease down there. And then of course you have all the, the goodness, the flavor down here at the bottom that will kind of, once we add water and stuff in here, it'll release all of that stuff into, into the beans and so we'll add our one yeah. onion and then we'll let this cook or we'll just caramelize it uh, and we'll let this go for probably you know another three minutes or so and then we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll add the beans all right we got this thing rock and rolling here this is perfect I'm kind of pulling off with the onions I can pull off some of the good flavor down off the bottom you can see we got a really nice little mixture here now the next part is adding the beans and so obviously open the can of beans I don't use the uh, I drain all the water out I don't want the bean water I'm gonna put fresh uh, water in and then we just put the beans in Yum. and then bring over the water and slowly add, and this is kind of an important part here because you don't want to, you don't want to add too much water. I'm gonna put some potatoes and stuff in here, and you don't want you're gonna kind of boil this for a little while, and if you get the water up too high to the top, it'll start to start to boil over. So the magic is is to get it, and we'll continue to add a little bit of water throughout the process here, but we don't want to get this filled up too high. Now the next part is taking our Texas Spices. Wild here. And I use a really good handful. Handful. We want to get everything kind of mixed up here. Now again, it's really important to notice that I did not empty that bacon grease. And what will happen with these beans is we continue to cook this down. By the time we get it done, it'll almost be cooked down where there's hardly any water in it at all. And it'll the beans will take on this real kind of real delectable kind of waxy um, texture and they'll just be really, really tasty, really good. So that's the thing. So that's right here is about perfect to where you want the water because we're gonna keep this keep this uh, heat up on high for a while and let it do its thing. All right, so the last little piece here before we just let it start doing its thing for hours and hours is I use these yellow potatoes, not a russet potato, oops. But just, you know, they call them like a, like a gold potato, whatever the, there's different kinds and we just cut them, you know, half, cut them in half and then just set them in the top, just push it down a little bit. May need to add a little bit of water, but again, the key is we're continually trying to cook. We'll add a little bit of water over time, but we'll keep this at a pretty good boil for a while. And of course we won't cover it up and it'll evaporate. And again, as probably a couple times over the course of the next four or five hours that this is cooking, I'll just keep adding just enough water to keep it, you know, at the level, at the top level. But you don't want this, it's not a soup. You don't want there to be, you don't want to finish it with this amount of water in it. You'll see when we get to the end kind of what's happening. You just want enough water in here where when you push all those in that you're going to cover them up. The you're going to lose, these potatoes are going to cook for a long time, so they're going to lose a little bit of their consistency, but it's nice because you get the starchy stuff going and it kind of thickens up, you know, the water and everything and the potatoes get cooked really well, obviously, and they get a little loose and crumbly and it's really nice. Some people, I, for a long time, I actually put the potatoes in much later. I would cook for a long time and I put the potatoes in much later. 
but you know most recently I've just been adding everything at the same time and it works really well you're not really stirring it a ton of times over the time that it's cooking last so, two good ones there's one okay yeah put that in there so this is good and we'll just let it cook like this we'll do some periodic check-ins but again it's 1 30 and we're not going to eat for another probably five hours so this will just be doing its thing for five hours keep it on high for a little while until it gets to a boil and then i'll start rolling it back so that it's just not going crazy boil but probably about halfway and then the last couple hours of the cook I'll actually move it over to the smallest burner here and just basically keep enough heat on it so that it's you can just see you know a little bit of bubble uh, we're just cooking that way so uh, we'll probably come back in a few hours and just kind of let you know what it's looking like there but uh, we're good to go it's ready to go All right, folks, so um, it's about quarter till four. So I think we started about 1.30. So 2.30, 3.30, so about two hours and 15 minutes in, this is what we've got. I've already actually added water to it one time, um, but you can see how it'll start to cook down. And you see, it's hard to see with the light here, but you get this nice, real kind of oily texture to it because you've got, you're cooking the water out of it and you've left the bacon grease behind and so when we're done this is kind of the level of moisture we're still going to cook this for another you know hour and a half or something like that so you want to keep water in it otherwise uh, you'll burn it at the bottom unless you're you know stirring constantly you don't want to stir too much because uh, then all potatoes everything will start falling apart you know if you do that so we'll just uh, add a little bit of water there and that should be enough to last us through when we actually get done so there we go there's the beans all right it is about 6 15 we're gonna get start getting the steaks ready and we're finished with the beans I've actually taken them off because they take a while to uh, to cool down but you can see how little how much we've rendered down the juice and stuff and so it's you know it's pretty syrupy and uh you know the potatoes are kind of falling apart a little bit some of the beans are falling apart and it's just pretty much perfect now of course before we get started you gotta have a proper drink st louis blues are playing tonight so using the uh st louis blues glass making us an old-fashioned what are you proper old fashioned? Well, using some Willet, mm -hmm. some bourbon. This stuff is really fantastic, actually. Just kind of found this recently. It's like a, you know, it's like a simple syrup, but it tastes better. Demerara. And then uh, my personal favorite. Demerara. Chocolate bitters. Oh wait. And then of course we got these. Uh, Demerara. Bourbon toothpicks. These Danes and bourbon toothpicks. Orange and topped with the uh, Luxardo Maraschino Cherry. Got that proper drink, ready to go. We're starting out here with some what, Gaff? What we got? Seasoning the steaks. But what kind of steaks we got? Prime ribeyes from Costco. Of yes. course, Costco is the best. Costco. So the thing that I kind of focus on when I'm trying to get ribeyes, of course, is when you're getting prime, you want it to be, you want it to be, uh, you lean. know, not lean. You want it to have a lot of fat, but a lot of marbling lean. and stuff in it. Yeah, the thing lean. I look for is this piece right here. So this is the cap. the ribeye cap. And when I get a, a ribeye, I want it to have a nice, big, thick ribeye cap. That's the best part. So we got the uh, we got the ribeyes. It's gonna go three of us for the four of us dudes. It should be enough. And then really the only two things we put on here. We're going back to this. You guys have seen this before. This is the uh, the Texas Wild Rub. We're gonna put that on. We put it in the beans. We're gonna put it on here. And then uh, which one? We got two different ones here. Kathy and I went to Santa Fe, New Mexico, 
and we got some fancy uh, from the Santa Fe olive oil and balsamic company. We've got the red chili and garlic, which is pretty fantastic. And then we also have the rosemary. And so we're gonna put a little bit of, you know, pick the steaks up and get olive oil on both sides and then we're gonna, then we're gonna season them. Now we don't have to, we're not using a lot, just a little bit on top of each one. And we're gonna rub it in with our fingers. So rub that in. Did you work? And then basically you're just going to let these sit for, you know, 30 minutes or so. Just let them come to room temperature when all the brown sugar stuff is all kind of melted away. And that's when you're ready to go. For, for my steak, you need peanut butter. <laughs> Alright, we're out here at the grill. Uh, the grill that I use is a Napoleon grill and the side that I use here has two infrared burners and they get super hot. They're like 1800 degrees down at the burner. And so it really, especially when you can see over here, the steaks have uh, started to get a little more room temperature and they're, the brown sugar and stuff is melting. And so when we get these on here, it gets so hot, it'll caramelize. You get this nice crisp uh, outside with this real nice taste. And of course you, you we don't leave the, we don't leave the rub and stuff on long enough to let it just sort of absorb and get into the meat. So you got this real crispy outside to it and you got a real meaty inside. And the other thing we'll use, another great tool, if you guys don't have one of these, it's called a thermopin. Thermopin. You're cooking nice steaks. This thing is an instant read thermometer. You can see it's hot. Already going. Hot. As hell out here today, they'll just keep going up. You can see over here on this grill, this one's not even turned on. It's over 200 degrees on the inside of the other side and it's not even, uh, they haven't even turned that side on yet. It's so hot out here today. All right, Gav. Take one of these out. We'll just kind of see where it is here. Let's put them up here for a little while. Close it up. And it turns into like an oven. And now we wait. And now we wait. All right, here's the finished product. They're pretty, pretty fantastic. Let's see. Let's get a little. Let's get a little, little, little. Try a little piece right off of the. What do you think? Obviously. All right, so we got our three steaks in here cook to medium rare. I know a lot of people, so the same thing with steak, and I know it's hard to see on here, but steak always has a grain in it. And if you can see the way the grain flows right there this way, and so you always want to cut across the grain, generally speaking. What I try to, uh, what I try to do here with the ribeyes is to separate the cat piece because its grain generally goes in, a, in an opposite direction. Instead of just cutting across like that, plus you can always kind of trim a little bit of the, the fat and stuff off. And I'll cut, kind of like a hamburger, and I'll cut it this way. And then I'll take, I don't know if you can see or not, but see how the, the grain for the cap runs this way. And then I'll cut. On them. I'll cut this way. So, do that. Want to cut? Got a nice medium rare cut right there. And I generally try to kind of clean up the edges, edges and stuff for the customers. This is the good part. This is the ribeye cap. But it's very, very rich. And you can just see how really, really nice. So that's how that goes. Nice, medium rare. Took them off about 125, 130, usually where you want to go for that. Funny. And that's dinner. And that's dinner. That's how we make beans and steaks over here at the Lentz household. You can see how nice, you know, I don't know if you can see if you get that up close, but you can see how the, a little bit of the great marbling and you can see just, it got just hot enough to start to melt the fat in there. So it's just really, really nice. So that's that.
Oh, the other thing you usually want to do here too, so I'd, like for me, I'll cut a piece of this like this. And this stuff is pretty fantastic. This is some stuff, you don't ever get anything from this joint called the Spice House. You should check them out. This is called the Vulcan Fire Salt. Spicy? And so I'll use it, it is a little spicy. And I'll put a little bit of that on there like that. And right, I want that piece. Cut these up here, you can try a piece mm -hmm. of that. Maybe. See if you like that. Ooh, I'm Cause it is a little spicy. Mm. <laughs> like, the rub that I use doesn't really have any salt in it. So, <laughs> I usually say, nice to get a little salty, a little salt in your bite. And that Vulcan fire salt is really, really nice. So that's it. I like that salt. That's it. Thanks y'all for hanging out with us. It's time for us to eat. Bye. They said that dimmer, dimmer raw. I know. Dimmer raw, dimmer raw. Dimmer raw.